Good afternoon. Welcome everyone to this introduction to the Bachelor Archaeology in Leiden. Uh, we also would like to welcome all the people who watch this presentation on their own account uh, later. Well, very well, warm welcome. Uh, today we're going to talk about our bachelor curriculum uh, here in Leiden. And before we do that, uh, we will sh give a short introduction uh, on the persons that you will be watching the next hour. So, uh, my name is Adrian Lauwe and I am an assistant professor here at uh, Leiden University in the Faculty of Archaeology. And I have the privilege to teach our first year students their first field skills in the excavation that we uh, do every year in the first year. Um, in the run-up to this uh, event, uh, uh, a thought struck me that, uh, that uh, I actually uh, uh, started working uh, uh, as a student in Leiden in the very year that you were born. So uh, that was quite shocking uh, to me, to be honest. And therefore, I brought me, with me a very young person uh, <laughs> to compensate a bit for my old age. Hi, everyone. I'm Vera van Heel. Uh, I'm the student ambassador for archaeology. I just finished my bachelor's and doing a master's now, but I will tell you a bit about what studying the bachelor was like. Thank you, uh, Vera. <laughs> But you are, of course, curious uh, about how to become an archaeologist and what it is to be an archaeologist. Uh, well, as you might know, uh, uh, as uh, people interested in archaeology, uh, archaeology is often associated with uh, old ideas about old men digging in the desert with a teaspoon or with uh, images like Indiana Jones or Lara Croft from Tomb Raider or uh, with dinosaurs. Well, I have to uh, tell you, archaeology is not about that and you probably already knew that. Archaeology is, in fact, about humans, about human behavior in the past. So everything an archaeologist does is, in fact, somehow related uh, to being human. Archaeology is also uh, a science that, uh, at first sight, you would think that is, is something about the past. But archaeology is also a very relevant uh, discipline today. Uh, you could say that science is actually looking at only three questions, three major questions, and that is, where do we come from, who are we, and where are we going to? And naturally, archaeology can provide answers to the question, where do we come from? But also to the question, who are we? Because we are very much shaped by our past. And in that sense, it can also tell us a bit more about the direction that we are heading. So, uh, in the, your study, um, archaeology, uh, you will learn to look at societal issues today from a prehistoric or a historic perspective. And as I just mentioned, this can be a very re uh, relevant way of looking um, at our present day society. And when it comes to becoming an archaeologist, um, you will be joining archaeological projects all over the world, not just in the Netherlands, but also uh, in very tropical corners of, our, uh, of, of, the, of the great world we are living in. As archaeology is about humans, um, it's also a very broad discipline. So um, you cannot just um, say that archaeology is a typical alpha or beta uh, science or even a gamma science. Uh, we are, in fact, uh, taking parts out of these different science uh, directions, uh, the alpha sciences in the, the form of the humanities, uh, the beta sciences in the form of uh, uh, geomorphology, uh, the study of natural landscapes, but also chemistry, uh, microbiology, and so forth. Uh, also, archaeology is about uh, how people work together. It's quite a social study, so to speak. So the social sciences are also very relevant uh, to archaeology as a discipline. So archaeology is really about everything that has to do uh, with being human. Archaeology has also developed some own methods, uh, very typical archaeological methods over time uh, in studying the past. In this slide, you can see some examples of the, the way we study the past by looking at material like uh, the pottery shirt you see in this uh, particular slide. It's a Roman pottery shirt, and that single Roman pottery shirt can already tell us a lot about the people who once created it, who once used it, and even about the political situation in the day. Of course, we have excavations at our disposal, very specific excavation methods, but also experimental archaeology, like you also see in this slide, uh, where you see a reconstruction of a prehistoric settlement. And of course, uh, archaeology is also about us today. So uh, how do we um, present archaeology to our uh, fellow citizens? Uh, that's why museums are also important to archaeologists and uh, a very important part of the archaeological method. And like I mentioned, uh, other disciplines are as important to archaeology as the past itself. 
So uh, we take inspiration from other disciplines. Um, here you see some examples of uh, samples being taken in the field for uh, beta analysis, uh, but also ethnographic study uh, and stuff like that is also important to archaeology as a discipline. Uh, today uh, we have quite nice examples of how these various different disciplines work together. Um, since the Asian DNA has become available, uh, you see archaeologists working together with uh, biologists and uh, linguistics, uh, people specialized in lingu linguistics. Just one example uh, showing that archaeology is very multidisciplinary. So when you are planning on studying archaeology, uh, what kind of profile do you have to think of? Well, first of all, uh, you have to have a broad interest. Uh, like I mentioned, archaeology is about people. And uh, with 7 billion people living in this planet, uh, there's a quite a big variety in people. So you have to have a broad interest in, in uh, not only people, but also in the way these people behave. You have to be analytical. Um, you can see archaeology as a sort of crime scene investigation. Only our crime scene took place in the very distant past. And we only have the archaeological precipitation of these actions that are means for us to investigate human behavior in the past. So we're really uh, trying to reconstruct past human behavior on the, the material and the features that we find in the field. So you have to be quite analytical. In that sense, you also have to be practical. Um, archaeology is really about using your brains, the gray matter, uh, but you also have to use your hands when it comes to field work, for instance. Um, some situations, uh, they also require quite practical solutions. Uh, as you can imagine, in field work, um, everything uh, can be a surprise when it comes to archaeology. In that sense, you also have to be creative. Uh, a good old colleague of mine once said that um, there's only one thing certain in archaeology, and that is that everything is uncertain in archaeology. So uh, when it comes to uh, excavation, for instance, uh, you will never exactly know what you are going to find. So you have to be creative and be, uh, be able to improvise on the spot. And of course, uh, besides being practical, uh, being analytical, it's also important uh, to be theoretical, to translate the things that we discover as archaeologists into a theory that helps us explain past human behavior. It's very hands-on. As you can imagine, you are the one that is going to study materials from thousand years old. So um, as archaeologists, we have the privilege of touching these materials and sometimes even the people themselves uh, that once lived thousand years ago. ago. So it's quite hands-on. Uh, you have to be persistent as an archaeologist. Um, sometimes we work in quite challenging circumstances uh, where uh, the end results still remain promising, but you have to be persistent to, re to, uh, to get to that end goal. And I think the most important quality of an archaeologist is that you have to be social. Archaeology is real teamwork. It's about working together and together reconstruct that past human behavior, that past, uh, that past world. So as an archaeologist, you have to be quite social. Uh, also because you will be working together for quite uh, long periods of time when it comes to excavation, but also when it comes to working in research projects, but even in class. Uh, this is quite a list, but I think uh, there can still be things added to this list, uh, would you say, uh, <laughs> Vera? I think it's quite an extensive list. Yeah, the teamwork, I would definitely say, is also probably a big aspect of it. And I like the broad interest there as well, especially at Leiden, where you sort of touch upon all these different regions and different time periods and different sciences. I think it's, yeah, it's a good list. I would say I would add teamwork as a, a separate one, maybe even, but yeah, good one. I like it. Yeah. yeah, good one, good one. And, of course, I have to add, uh, being social also means uh, drinking a beer after a class <laughs> or after a, a hard day's work in the field. In our bachelor program, uh, we have several aims for you in store. And that is um, to preserve and further develop the curiosity and the fascination of our students for the past. Uh, I can imagine that you watching this, uh, this presentation, you already have quite an interest in archaeology. And I can promise you, uh, when you start studying archaeology uh, here in Leiden, uh, we are going to uh, tickle that, uh, that uh, curiosity even more. Uh, by looking at these past societies, uh, you're going to specialize in different regions all over the world, and you will learn new stuff about uh, the past that you never heard of, and that will uh, even uh, further your curiosity uh, into the past. 
It's also uh, uh, an aim of us to uh, add analytical, creative, and communicative skills, as well as social and ethical reflection. These are not just um, skills that are uh, specific for an archaeologist, but for a scientist in general. And it also counts for the fact that you have to be socially empathetic uh, as, a, as a researcher. And also um, uh, practical when it comes to reflexive professional uh, behavior. These are quite general skills uh, that are also uh, usable outside archaeology. So when it comes to studying archaeology in Leiden, uh, the interesting thing about Leiden is, uh, is that Leiden has an international focus. So students and teachers uh, do come here from all over the world. Uh, the last couple of years, uh, the, the people starting in Leiden, so the first year students, about one third of them actually comes from abroad. And they include countries from South America up to China, North America, uh, and so forth. So it's a real international uh, community that you are going to be part of when coming to Leiden. Uh, there are two major specializations in the bachelor already. Uh, that is world archaeology and heritage and society. And then we'll come back on those specializations later in this presentation. Inside these two specializations, we have many focus areas. And every year, about 120 students come to Leiden. So as a first year student, you're already part of a big group, a uh, big international group of students. Uh, the nice thing about Leiden, uh, I also studied in Leiden a long time ago. Uh, I think it's that it is centrally located, close to the airport as well. Uh, but it's, it still remains a very small scale town. So it, it is quite cozy, gezellig, as we say in the Netherlands. Um, and it also uh, is quite nice that when you go to the city after class, uh, you will come across uh, your fellow students or even teachers uh, and, uh, and professors in the city. So it's really small scale, which is, uh, I think, really nice about Leiden. Uh, more seriously, uh, Leiden is also uh, top 10 ranking worldwide when it comes to the quality of the uh, archaeological research itself. Uh, it has been in this top 10 for years in a row already. And we have state-of-the-art laboratories and facilities. And in the next slide, I will show you some of those uh, labs in more detail. So we have the Material Culture Lab, for instance, where you can study all sorts of archaeological artifacts. And you will not only learn how to describe these artifacts, but also how to interpret them. And you will see how these artifacts can tell stories about the people that once created them and once used them. We have an archaeozoological lab. Uh, where you can study uh, animal remains, uh, old animal remains. And it's not just about the yeah, anatomy of this, these animals, but especially about how these animals once lived together with people and how these two interacted. We have the botany lab, and botany includes all sorts of plant life, you must imagine. Uh, so the study of den the dendrochronology, for instance, which is tree ring research that helps us date specific archaeological remains. Uh, but it can also tell you something about the vegetation uh, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the distant past. Also think about pollinology, like, uh, uh, for, uh, that is the study of pollen. That can help you make reconstructions of vegetation of, uh, of uh, societies thousands of years ago. And last but not least, uh, since several years we have quite an extensive osteology, osteology lab, uh, where you can study the remains of people. And these, tell us, these remains, they tell us a lot, a lot about, uh, about how, who these people were uh, and what kind of circumstances these people lived, how healthy they were, and they can, all, they can give us insight in uh, how we, who we are today. A big part of our laboratory is actually located outside. So the world really is our laboratory. Uh, we carry out field work all over the world, and we will come back on that later in this presentation. So the entry requirements, if you are interested in all the details, you can uh, scan the code in the, in, in the slide in your screen. Uh, the most important ones to mention here is that you can enter uh, the study archaeology in Leiden with all profiles from your VWO diploma. So uh, you don't need a specific profile. All profiles uh, can start studying um, archaeology here in Leiden. It also counts for non-Dutch diplomas that meet the same requirements. Uh, or a final diploma from a Dutch University of Applied Science. Um, when you already did a university study elsewhere uh, or at Leiden, you can also use your uh, first year certificate uh, to, uh, to come to uh, archaeology. 
and uh, you will need a good level of English proficiency. And uh, if necessary, you can take uh, the tests that are mentioned here in the, in the screen. So in your bachelor, um, one week, one general week will look a bit like this. So 10, year, 10 hours of lectures um, and about 30 hours that you have to fill in yourself in the form of practical excursions, assignments and seminars. So when you start studying uh, as a student, uh, you must be aware of the fact that you will be treated here as an adult. So you are quite responsible already from the very start. So please bear that in mind when you come, uh, when you start to study anywhere in the world. It not only counts for archaeologists. So um, you have a lot of freedom uh, throughout the week. So only 10 hours that you are really required to be somewhere in the lecture room. In those other 30 hours, uh, you're a bit more flexible in that. But in the end, you must take into consideration that you will be working about 40 hours a week on your studies. Also, we uh, provide the possibility to do the assignments in Dutch in the first year. Uh, the lectures will uh, be in English uh, from the very week, first week onwards. But uh, in the first half of the first year, uh, lectures are also uh, offered in Dutch. But from Christmas onwards, all the lectures will be in English. But it will remain possible to do your exams and do your uh, essays in Dutch, even later in the program. It's also important to note that we have a thing like the uh, binding study advice, which means that after the first year, you must have completed 75% of the courses at least to uh, be allowed to continue in your study. Uh, as mentioned, uh, you will be treated uh, here as an adult uh, with responsibilities. Please bear that in mind. Uh, but we will not uh, leave you uh, out there in the cold, of course. Uh, there are several ways of helping you on your way here in your studies in archaeology. Uh, we have the study advisors, for instance, who are there to help you out in finding your way in all the procedures and where to find which kind of information. And in the first year, we also have the mentorate, where you have uh, buddies that help you out uh, finding your way in the faculty. So, uh, it's time to shift our attention to the bachelor as a whole. So, in the first year, you will get an overview of archaeology. Archaeology as a science, uh, and you will learn some academic and professional skills. After the first year, uh, you're going to choose a specialization. Uh, it's either world archaeology or heritage and society. In the second year, after you made your choice, it's possible to specialize even further within these two um, uh, fields of study. Uh, there are general courses, um, but also specialization courses on a specific region, for instance, or a specific methodology in archaeology. Uh, and you have to do six weeks of field work in your second year. So um, you're going out in the world and find a nice excavation that you can take part in. In the third year, um, half the year you will be spending on a minor and um, Vera has already some experience with a, with a minor and she can tell you a bit more about what kind of minors you can think of when it comes to uh, archaeology. Yeah, so yeah, the idea of a minor is that you uh, take some classes outside of archaeology or to either go abroad to do a different kind of archaeology, something that's not offered in Leiden. So you can think of set programs, like for example, there's a human origins minor in Leiden, if you're interested in that. But you can also branch out and do psychology or religious studies. So it's really sort of seeing what's beyond archaeology. You can do that in the Netherlands. You can do that within Leiden even, but you can also go abroad, go to a European country or go worldwide, really. Uh, I will tell, talk about this a bit later, but I've gone uh, to Jerusalem for my study abroad semester. So, yeah, there's loads of opportunities, but the idea is to yeah, get out, explore uh, different fields as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, expand your horizon. Yeah. Uh, like uh, I mentioned several times already, archaeology is about humans. And uh, in that sense, archaeology is quite a broad discipline. And therefore, it's really good to also look outside uh, the field of archaeology uh, for inspiration for your own research. Um, next to the minor in your third year, we have some general courses for you in store. Uh, there's also a small internship involved. And in the end, you are going to write, uh, you are going to write your uh, bachelor thesis, which is the first time that you're going to conduct a research on your own account. Uh, there are um, assistant professors or associate professors uh, to help you out with this task. Uh, so you will not be working completely on your own. Um, but you will have uh, quite autonomy, quite an autonomy uh, already uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, in this part of your studies. So, as promised, uh, I'm going to tell more about the two specializations we offer from the second year onwards. Uh, the first one is world archaeology, 
Um, and I have to say, not really the first one, but one of the two specializations that we offer. And World Archaeology is really about uh, reconstructing where we come from and expand our knowledge and stories about our past to learn more about who we are as humans by looking at the past. Um, in World Archaeology, you're going to specialize, and you have uh, quite a choice in that, in different regions and in different methods and techniques. Then the specialization, heritage and society. Uh, when it comes to archaeology, you must bear in mind um, that what you are studying as an archaeologist is not just interesting for yourself, it's not only about yourself, uh, but you're actually studying someone's heritage. So uh, as an archaeologist, Vera and I are studying archaeological material, but the question is, who, is, who owns this material? And these are the kind of questions that uh, you're going to think about in the heritage and society track. Because as archaeologists, we have a responsibility uh, for, uh, for our heritage. And in heritage and society, you're going to reflect on the future of cultural heritage and the preservation choices that are being made in this process. The nasty thing about archaeology as a science is that we are actually destroying the very thing that you are studying. You can only do an excavation once. So the choices that we make, uh, they have to be very uh, thought, they have to be thought through really well. And that is why heritage and society is such an important uh, discipline. Uh, this is also where you start thinking about how archaeology is rev relevant uh, for the present. And uh, you're going to learn more about the theoretical and practical sides of heritage policy uh, from an archaeological perspective as well. Uh, in the Netherlands, for instance, um, it is obligatory to do archaeological research everywhere where the soil is going to be disturbed. So as you can imagine, there's quite a lot of archaeology uh, happening around and uh, that re uh, requires quite some policies. And the situation is not different uh, outside the Netherlands. So the skills in the bachelor program. Uh, you will gain a deep knowledge of the relevance of the past in the present, as mentioned. Uh, you're going to develop some critical thinking. Academic writing is also important. Maybe you've already been writing on a report yourself, uh, um, a small thesis in, your, in high school, but you will be developing these skills even further. Uh, and at the end of the bachelor, we hope that you are able uh, to write an academic account on yourself. Independent research skills, um, they will come about throughout the entire uh, curriculum. And not unimportant time management, something archaeologists uh, are not often that good at, but still we're going to work on that skill with you. <laughs> uh, first, I would like to give you a short impression of the kind of courses that you uh, are going to encounter when studying archaeology in Leiden in the first year. Uh, one of the first courses that is being taught is past and future, where you learn about archaeology as a science, but also already about the relevance of archaeology as a uh, scientific discipline uh, in, in the present. World Archaeology is a lecture series that continues the entire uh, first year and takes you all over the world uh, to different places and teaches you all about the archaeology of that particular place. You're already going to study material yourself. Uh, in the first year we have the Material Studies, uh, material studies course. Uh, well, you will be studying um, uh, pottery, bone material, stone tools, and these are all real archaeological artifacts. And of course, uh, this is my part in the program. Uh, we will be training you in some very practical field skills. At the end of the first year, uh, you will have the, the field school one, where you're going to join in a real excavation where you will gain the first research skills in the field. And after uh, completing field school one, you're actually able to go out into the world and take part in every excavation that you like. Field School 1 is actually part of the so-called Practical Skills program uh, that starts in the first year with the course Field Techniques, which is a theoretical approach to archaeological methodologies. That is followed by Field School 1, uh, uh, the course I just uh, told you about. Uh, Field School 2 is really fun in the sense that you can pick a project of your own, liking somewhere in the world, and uh, you can join that project uh, for three to six weeks uh, to gain some more experience in uh, excavation routines, for instance. And also on the field of heritage and society, there are special programs developed for this uh, practical skills program. In the third year, you will eventually uh, also do an internship of three weeks. Uh, that, that, that does not necessarily have to be field work, uh, but you will be working more on yourself, uh, have more autonomy. 
And uh, it's now time to give the floor to Vera, who will give you an impression of the kind of projects that you have to think of when it comes to the Practical Skills Programme. Vera. Thanks, Arjan. Yes, as Arjan was already explaining, um, in your first year you first get all the theory and sort of first a dry run on how an excavation will go. So it's sort of your last two uh, weeks will be actual field work going on an actual excavation, as you can see on the photos here. Um, this will be taught by staff, but also all of your students. So it's really sort of this, yeah, putting everything into practice in your first year. So you'll get all the skills you need. You will learn how to draw. You will learn how to see all the features. Uh, yeah, draw profiles, all those kinds of things. Uh, and as you can see, it will be in the Netherlands, so you'll have a rainy day one day, a sunny day the next. Uh, <laughs> that's sort of a given, I think. This was summer, so just to get an idea of what it might look like, uh, you might have to drain a lot of water. But it's a lot of fun. It's with everyone from your first year. Um, and you will be in touch with the materials as well. So for, it could be a, a large excavation. You will never get an overview of what everyone is doing. But as you can see on the small photo, uh, you'll also be washing the finds. So you'll actually be working with the materials, see whatever it is that comes out of the ground. In this case, it was a medieval excavation, really close to the faculty. That was kind of fun. So you see the big uh, soil heap behind that is the faculty. So it was really close by. You could just drop by, get on your bike, go there, go home. You could even have lunch with your friends that were still in the building. So that was quite, <laughs> quite a fun experience to be so close to the faculty still. Um, so yeah, it, this is just the first, uh, first actual excavation you'll be doing to prepare you, I think, for the, and your second year's field work. If we could go to yeah, the oh next sorry, slide. Yeah, I <laughs> Thanks. <I'm thinking. laughs> Thanks, yeah. Because in your second year, um, you can also go beyond the Netherlands. You can go abroad as well. There's many different field work projects uh, within Leiden University already. So you can, for example, go to the Dominican Republic. You can go to Cyprus. There's excavations in Greece and Italy. Uh, but also in the Netherlands, uh, I chose to go to Jordan. This is one of the excavations by one of the professors, uh, Professor Peter Arkemans. He has a project in the uh, northeastern desert of Jordan. So it's called the Black Desert. It goes from Syria all the way through Jordan into Saudi Arabia. Uh, and it's sort of a, well, people saw it, saw it as a desolate landscape where no one really lived. Um, so the, the aim of the project is really to sort of map the landscape and see if this is really true. And it does not hold true. I can already give that as a spoiler alert from really from Neolithic times, even earlier Paleolithic times up to now, people are still living and traveling through the landscape. Um, so yeah, the, the project is trying to sort of map all of that, gather all that data. And what we're looking at here on this photo is the burial tombs. So if you drive through the landscape, it's quite a hilly landscape, as you can see, and there's big black basalt boulders there. Um, and they were used to make burial tombs. So if you drive through the landscape, you can see all these black dots on the ridges. Uh, so you climb up a hill <laughs> with all your gear and you start exploring those. Often they have been looted in the past, unfortunately, because there's these myths of there being gold inside of them. Uh, we haven't found that. <laughs> That's quite an Indiana Jones view on archaeology, I think. But it's still very interesting to see what, uh, well, what is still there and what is still on these hills as well. Because as you can see in the small photo, there's also a lot of rock art. Um, the script you can see is pre-Arabic, so it's a Safietic, it's called. So people have really been in the landscape and have been using the landscape for a long time. And the fun thing about the rock art is that it often depicts desert scenes. So here you can sort of see a hunting scene, and there's many of those, but there's also just the animals that are in the area. So you have lions and camels, um, or yeah, some sort. sometimes it's warrior scenes with people on horses. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's quite an insight into sort of what people would do uh, living in the desert a long time ago. Uh, and the burial tombs are usually Bronze Age, Iron Age, but then there's lots of reuse. And we can tell that from, uh, well, the burial gifts that we still find with the, well, within the burials. They've often been looted, but sometimes we still find bone material, but mainly you find personal belongings they've been buried with. So think of beads or bracelets or sometimes some sort of weaponry or armor. Uh, so those are really the kinds of things you'll be looking into when you yeah, start exploring burial tombs. The desert. And then to briefly give you an idea of what a general day in the field would look like, I think this is probably widespread across any uh, excavation you might go on. Usually you start early to. No, not in us, I can already assure you. <laughs> it will not be that, uh, that early. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> in your first year, you'll have a bit more sleep. <laughs> But yeah, if you go to hot climates, then especially you'll wake up early to sort of start before it gets really hot. So we would uh, leave at five, 
uh, well, we would all jump on the Jeep, go into the desert, and then we start excavating around six. Uh, you'll continue until around one. Uh, every day we would make photos at the end, so we can make a digital copy of what we've been doing that day. So if you start the next day, you start taking away more stones, and you can still go back to what you did previous days, because yeah, once it's done, it's no way of sort of puzzling it back. And then you can even take it back home to Leiden, so it's also really good for, well, you don't have to physically be in Jordan to study these uh, burial tombs, which I thought was really interesting, and also shows how important digital archaeology is becoming. Uh, yeah, in the afternoon you'll have lunch, have a bit of free time, and then you start uh, with the fine processing. So again, the materials you've been excavating, you will look at them, study them, document them, draw them often. Uh, and since we were staying in the desert and was just a small group of people, everyone would have to cook uh, once in a while, so one person will uh, make dinner for everyone. Uh, you'll have dinner, and usually you go to sleep early, because it's going to be early the next day, and you have, I guess, one day off usually. I think that's it for my uh, second year's field work. But as promised, I'll come back to the minor. Um, in my third year, I did a semester abroad. I went to Jerusalem. And this was because I was really interested in sort of combining uh, religious studies and archaeology and historical uh, archaeology as well. So sort of seeing where this all uh, comes together. And I thought this was a very interesting place to do that. Um, so I took courses in religious studies. I also took some courses in archaeology, philosophy. So that's the, the nice thing about going abroad as well. There's so many different things you can choose from and sort of try and incorporate them into how you understand archaeology or what you want to do in the future. Uh, and it was also nice to go on nice field trips in the weekends, see a lot of excavations or archaeological sites. Uh, so yeah, all in all, I had a good time in my third year, yeah. <laughs> It's really good to see when you start talking about uh, the projects that you did, that you already already uh, uh, tell this as you're a researcher yourself. And that is really uh, what these uh, kind of um, uh, courses are about, that you are actually already uh, working as a, as a researcher. It's a, yeah, you, you really feel involved, you yeah. get involved, you sort yeah. of start seeing everything. Yeah, so absolutely. Good. I think there's one more slide for you to introduce. Oh, yes, yeah. Uh, well, of course, we're here to tell you about archaeology, but if there's anything we've missed out or is there anything else you would like to know, please feel free to use the Q&A on the side of your screen to ask us questions and then we can come back to them yes. uh, after the presentation. We will. <laughs> um, of course, uh, there's an entire world waiting for you after your bachelor. Uh, so when you completed uh, one of the two bachelors that we offer in Leiden, so the World Archaeology Bachelor uh, will give you access to all the other uh, archaeology masters in, uh, in, that we offer in archaeology. So that's the master, the regular master, the research master, and uh, the master of science specializations in archaeology. Uh, the heritage and society master will give you uh, entry to uh, uh, master archaeology specializations such as global archaeology and heritage and museum studies. It also gives entry to master of science tracks in cultural anthropology, uh, global ethnography, uh, one of them, and uh, policy in practice. So even after uh, completing uh, your bachelor, you can still uh, specialize even further in different fields of archaeology. Uh, this is a slide uh, that is important to you, but also to, uh, probably to your parents, because the question that you will probably get when you uh, uh, announce that you're going to be an archaeology student is, but is there any work in ar archaeology? Uh, well, one of our fellow colleagues uh, did a little inquiry uh, uh, a short time ago, and uh, she came up with these two graphs. Um, about 60% of uh, people that did a bachelor in Leiden, uh, they will find work uh, in archaeology after their studies. And about 40% of them uh, will also find work, but outside archaeology. So uh, when it comes to the people that re remain in archaeology, uh, the, the biggest part will actually work in commercial uh, advice and field work. Uh, many uh, countries uh, have their own system of uh, how ar archaeology is arranged for. Uh, in the Netherlands, for instance, we have a commercial market where you have different companies that do excavations and many people actually start working for these companies. Uh, also, a large portion of them, uh, about 33%, uh, will remain in academia, in science, and do all sorts of stuff in research and in education, uh, like myself, for instance. 13% uh, uh, enters uh, government uh, jobs, uh, policy and research, 
that is, uh, that is something that I already mentioned when it came to heritage and society, to develop policies that protect our heritage and uh, will uh, uh, use our heritage to more advantage for our uh, present-day society. Uh, another 12% will work in the museum sector, uh, also an important part of the archaeological work, work field. So of the people that start working outside archaeology, um, uh, several commercial areas are being entered, uh, ICT for instance, or data management. Uh, as an archaeologist, you are a scientist in the first place, and it comes all down to managing, and re uh, first acquiring data and then managing data. So uh, these are one of those soft general skills that you also develop during your studies that are also applicable outside archaeology. 11% um, will still work in science, but not archaeology. Uh, Another 9% uh, will find government jobs. Uh, at the moment, we even have uh, um, an archaeologist with a PhD in Parliament. So that is a good example of how archaeology uh, people uh, find their way in society. Um, other people uh, will uh, enter the education. Uh, uh, two friends of mine from my study uh, time, uh, they are working as, uh, as, uh, as teachers in, uh, in high school, for instance. And uh, like I mentioned before, uh, archaeology is about humans, uh, about human behavior in the past, but also how humans work together. And that is something that will remain uh, relevant till the end of time, I would say. So uh, with an archaeology degree in your pocket, um, you have a very broad vision on how people can work together. And that is relevant um, uh, to, to the entire world, I would say. Um, from the entire world uh, to our all little faculty community, uh, we have a lively study association, which is uh, Las Terra, and uh, Vera will tell you about Terra a bit more in, uh, in a, few, a few seconds. Uh, faculty lectures are being arranged for, as you can see in one of those photos. Uh, there are even student assistant jobs. Uh, when you uh, like a particular course, uh, you can uh, sometimes help out and actually get paid for it. Uh, you can also play an active role in ongoing research, as Vera you already, already showed you. Or you can do some committee work as well. So there's a quite a living community uh, in Leiden. Uh, and the nice thing about Leiden, I still uh, would say, is that it's a very international community. So you will, ent you will encounter a lot of people from different places. And they will tell you a, far, a, a bit more about the world that you are living in uh, than you knew on beforehand. It's very nice to uh, interact with those uh, people from abroad, I would say. Um, Vera, the floor is yours for... Uh, Finishing this presentation. Yeah, I will. Yeah, let's have a few more words on uh, La Terra, the study association. Uh, well, the nice thing about archaeology and the community is that we have our own faculty, our own building. So I feel everyone inside the building is an archaeologist. There's someone you might at some point have had classes with or had had classes from. And I feel Terra plays an active part in that. They're very active within the uh, university. Almost everyone signs up and there's weekly activities going on. You can join, you don't have to if you don't want, or you can just go, well, as regularly as you want, really. Uh, they do uh, lectures, study trips, uh, well, maybe some more fun game nights or just drinks. Um, well, trips abroad as well. Hopefully that's possible again soon. Uh, and they also do a first year's weekend. Uh, so this will be at the beginning of your academic year and you get to meet all your fellow first year students. You will go a weekend away somewhere in the Netherlands uh, and really use that time to already get to know your fellow students. And I think that's just a really nice introduction to archeology span and to, yeah, well, what will be the next three years of your studies, hopefully. And not just the next three years, you are becoming a member for life, right? You're a member yeah. for life, yeah. <laughs> Even if you're done studying, you can come to the activities. <laughs> Let's see then, yeah. Um, if you already know what you want to study, then you can register on stu uh, studylink.nl. It's the Dutch website for signing up for your, um, well, your higher education. Uh, so here you will have the option to choose archaeology or choose any course you wish, of course. You could also go through archaeologyleider.nl to see all the steps you have to take to uh, sign up. And uh, if you have any questions in general, we'll be on the chat. Well, well, we'll be first answering your Q&A questions in a bit, but if afterwards you still have questions, please come visit us on the information market uh, or come to our campus tour on March 25th. You'll find the QR code there as well. It's uh, obligatory to sign up, uh, but that will be a tour throughout the campus. So you will, it will be in person. You will get a tour around the faculty, see all the labs, talk to students, and uh, really get a feel of yeah, where, where you hopefully will be next year or the year after. 
Uh, and another possibility. And another possibility. If you cannot make uh, Friday, uh, March 25th, there's also an option to come April 8th. That's, again, uh, a Friday. Uh, you can sign up through the QR code again. This will be a, a longer day, so you'll have a lecture by one of our lecturers, you'll have a practical by one of our lecturers, and you'll have a faculty tour again, and again, the option to talk to students and staff and to get, yeah, again, a broad overview of what a day studying archaeology might look like. So make sure to check that out. <laughs> um, yeah, afterwards we'll also have a video call, so you can use this QR code to get in touch with uh, a current student that's behind the video call at the moment. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions or wish to talk to a student, please use this video call a moment for that. But I think that now we're done and we have time yeah. for some questions you, yeah, you sent in already. Yeah, thank you. thank you so much for your interest so far and uh, for bearing with us uh, so long. Um, yeah, we hope that we were able to give you a good overview of our uh, bachelor program and uh, excited you um, uh, about archaeology. And uh, as uh, Vera already told you, uh, we are now uh, available for answering your questions um, that you have posted in the chat. So let's see those uh, questions. Ooh, here we go. The questions are coming in. How many students start every year? Uh, well, roughly 100, 120 students each year. Yeah, this year we have about uh, 120 students still in, uh, still in class. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it might also be good to mention uh, sort of the ratio between international and Dutch students here. Oh, yeah, good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, about one third of those uh, students comes from abroad, and uh, from with abroad I mean from all places all over the world. So uh, about uh, two thirds uh, are still Dutch students, uh, but one third is uh, coming from abroad. So, let's see another question: How much focus is there on anthropology in this study? Oh, that's interesting. Um, I think it also depends on if you choose the heritage and society track or the world archaeology track. Because um, I think part of your heritage and society track is to do some sort of anthropological study as well. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, also, uh, the, the kind of field work uh, you can do for heritage and society is closely re related to the methods employed in uh, anthropology. Uh, you can also do a minor in anthropology, if I'm not mistaken, already in your right. third year. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like with many other disciplines, uh, uh, when it comes to archaeology, especially anthropology, is of uh, great inspiration uh, to many archaeological methods. So um, archaeology has quite an anthropological uh, angle as well. Yes. Yeah, think of things like trying to draw parallels between what's happening now and the past by looking at ethnographic studies. Or yeah, exactly. Like uh, you're often dealing with tacit material, and you can draw inspiration from anthropology in interpreting how this material was once used by people. Let's see, is there a collaboration between the faculty and other institutions, such as museums? Yes, we have many museums in Leiden even. It's, it's great for museums in general. Um, but we have the Museum of Antiquities. This is often a place students will do an internship at as well, or have the opportunity to. And we have the Naturalis, the National History Museum yeah. as well. We have a Museum of Ethnology. Uh, so these are definitely possibilities you can look into uh, for doing internships. And then there's also institutions abroad. Think of uh, the, there's an institute in Rome, an institute in Athens. They offer courses uh, if you're from Leiden University or any Dutch university that, that deals with sort of archaeological or historical uh, yeah, interests, I guess, yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> Is it an option to combine archaeology with another bachelor program? Uh, we also had a question uh, this morning, and uh, I think you perfectly answered that, uh, Vera. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's definitely possible, uh, but we just I would not recommend to do it at the same time. I would recommend to start one, um, meet your binding study advice, so get that 75% of your uh, great, uh, well, ECTs in in your first year, uh, and then you can sort of add a second bachelor's to it. Uh, it will be some puzzling. Um, Logistically, uh, sometimes schedules might overlap, so take into account that it might take you, well, you have to maybe stretch out your studies a bit longer. Don't expect to finish two BA programs in three years. I think that would be much. But it's definitely interesting to sort of combine bachelors and see how those, yeah, how you can combine the two. Yeah. Um, here we go. Does it matter if you did not follow history in high school? Nope, that's completely fine. Um, 
there's no specific courses you have had to have uh, in high school because everything starts from base level. Yeah. Archaeology is not something usually taught in high school, so everything will just start from scratch, and from there you will sort of build up year by year. Yeah, exactly. Oh, there's that question about the <laughs> books again. Which study books are used during the bachelor? Any books you recommend for me to read <laughs> in, in preparation? Well. Yes, so well, we actually have two uh, with us. Uh, Fira brought them from their own collection. Uh, this is one that we use often in the first year. Um, it's quite recommendable. Um, it's um, Archaeology by Renfrew and Bahn. And it's a very basic instruction on the archaeological methods used, uh, not only about excavation, but also about uh, dating methods, and that by dating methods I mean uh, determining how old something is. Um, this is one you use in your course as well, yeah, this, right? Uh, yeah. th this is the book I use uh, for field techniques in Field School 1, actually. Uh, then we have the Human Past, uh, which is used in the World Archaeology ser Lecture Series. Uh, this is a nice overview about the most uh, important archaeological finds uh, done in history, and what that tells us about a particular area in the world. Um, so these are two books that, uh, that are uh, mandatory literature in the first year, so um, feel free to already uh, look, look up these books. Uh, I also recommend uh, the book uh, Sapiens by uh, Yuval Noah Harari, which gives you a very good impression about uh, the relevance of the past in the present. Very recommendable. What's the difference between uh, a HBO archaeology and so sort of the applied uh, sciences archaeology and the university study of archaeology? Yeah. If I can translate it like that, it's the Dutch system, HBO and WO. Um, so there's one HBO that's in Deventer. Um, I would definitely say that's the more applied version, yeah. mainly geared at becoming a field archaeologist, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that's uh, University of Applied Science uh, in, in the Netherlands, in Deventer it is located. A very decent uh, program they have, and you'll be trained there as a, um, as a, as a field archaeologist. And I think it has to do with being a field archaeologist, especially in the Dutch system. So you will be uh, uh, taught how to write reports, for instance, uh, but also how legislation is uh, rec uh, 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 regulated in the, in the Netherlands, legislation. Um, world uh, the um, archaeology studies at university, uh, they are a bit broader, a bit more theoretical. You are still able to uh, train yourself uh, as a field archaeologist, but uh, it has a far heavier theoretical backbone, so to speak. Uh, but the interesting thing is uh, that uh, there's um, uh, a, a good collaboration between the, uh, the, the program in Deventer and the program in Leiden. So, uh, uh, there are teachers uh, working at both uh, locations already, and uh, students uh, are being exchanged in the, in the laboratories, for instance. Um, so uh, it comes down, thing, I think, to the difference that uh, a university study in archaeology has a, a big, uh, more theoretical backbone. That, that is the, the, the most important difference. So better preparing you for maybe a career in academia. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Which time periods does the study cover in depth? Well, er, I, actually everything between uh, the, the most early forms of, uh, of human life uh, up till the Second World War. Uh, those are all mm. periods of interest to archaeologists and uh, that are some way being covered in our program. Yeah, definitely with the World Archaeology series we uh, talked about earlier, that is especially where you will get a broad overview of all the, well, the time depth really, and also the regions. What kind of exams are there during the bachelor program? Uh, there are different uh, kinds of exams. Uh, we have the written exams, uh, the classical written exams that you probably already know from high school, uh, but also uh, essay exams, um, where you have to write a small essay to complete a course. Uh, and uh, we also ha just have the practical, uh, where, you, uh, where you just have to attend. So by just going through the practical, by being present and doing all, everything that is required of you, you already complete the course. Uh, I would say that those are the three main uh, forms of um, exams. In some courses, you will also be required to make a presentation that is uh, being graded. Uh, am I forgetting something? No, I think that pretty much yeah. covers it. Yeah, usually it's, it's broken down into different things, so like a certain percentage will be a presentation yeah, and exactly. certain that will be the exam. This can be short essay questions, the exams, by the way, or uh, multiple choice. It's different per course as well. 
Yeah, they, uh, they, uh, we tend to bring a sort of variety in the, in the, in the ways uh, you are being uh, uh, examined in the, in the first year. So what is the ratio men-women in this study? Um, well, when it comes to men-women, I would say uh, that about 60% is woman and about 40% uh, uh, male. Uh, but we also have to mention that there's a, a broad gender spectrum uh, in our, uh, in our pro, uh, studying at Leiden at the moment. We have another high school uh, course question. Is it important to have had chemistry or biology? Uh, no, I haven't had that, and it was not. It did not sort of hinder me with the more uh, sciencey courses, if I can say it like that. Uh, again, you you just need to know why it is uh, important to archaeology how, or how you can apply those things to archaeology to understanding the past better. So it's not necessarily about knowing all these sort of chemical compositions and stuff. It's more about the application of it. Yeah, uh, like with history or other uh, courses, uh, you can come and study archaeology with all those different backgrounds, and uh, many of the basic principles are broken down to, to just the basic principles, yes. Is it possible to minor in art history in this study, or can you combine archaeology and art history in some way? Yes, you definitely can. Yeah, there is a minor. Uh, I also know of a student who is doing both the bachelors. Um, and the way she is trying to combine it is sort of looking at art historical pieces, say paintings, and then see, uh, look at the material that is used within them and try and find those in the archaeological record. That's a very specific example, but those are ways you can start thinking about uh, combining it's an interesting the two. Example. It's, yeah, 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 it's really fun. It's really great to see how she tries and match the two. So, uh, how is the interaction between Dutch and international students? Um, well, maybe it's nice that we both answer these questions from our different perspectives as a, as a, as a teacher and as a student. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, maybe you start first uh, by being a student and the way you experience those interactions. Yeah, um, yeah well, I would say sort of usually the, the introduction weeks are sort of separated. So you get that in the beginning. You have an international uh, introduction week and a Dutch introduction week. Uh, so sort of in the first week, you do see that there's a bit of these groups going on, but that usually mixes really quickly also because in the courses you will have to, to do stuff together you have practicals together you you, you you take your courses together in general do presentations together i think last terra also helps with this because it's just everyone you know with the same interest while being here for a couple of years so i feel like in general it mixes quite well and it becomes quite a nice group of people you really get to know i'd say yeah and then from a uh, perspective uh from, from myself as a teacher, uh, I witnessed uh, in the field school of last year, and it is really nice to see students from the Netherlands and from abroad working together in, in, in such a challenging um, um, environment and uh, see how they take benefit from each other and uh, how they uh, uh, already are blended in in this international community at the end of the first year. So uh, I would say that uh, the intermixing of uh, different nationalities goes quite well, to be honest. Yeah. So the difference with archaeology in Groningen or Amsterdam? Well, I think the most important thing to state is that uh, in all cities you can become a decent archaeologist. Uh, I think the most uh, important difference uh, when it comes to uh, Leiden is uh, that Leiden probably has a more a global uh, perspective on matters. Uh, it's far more international, uh, I would say, uh, than Groningen and Amsterdam. Um, and um, it's more specialized on, on, on global themes and, uh, and has a far more international um, stuff, uh, not, not necessarily stuff, but uh, not, far more international focus. I think that is the most important difference. But like I said, you can uh, become a decent archeologist in all three cities. And um, yeah, so uh, also please go check out uh, the other, uh, other cities, I would say, to uh, make a comparison uh, for yourself. Yeah, would agree. Definitely check out all the archaeology yeah. programs uh, and see what it is that y has your interest. Because for yeah, me, I the like the broadness. Yeah. yeah. So that's good to do. Let's see. Is the score is more expensive than others because of the excursions? Yeah, it depends a bit on the, the kind of specialization that you choose. Um, especially when it comes to second year field work, uh, you can do an excavation in the Netherlands, so that will not involve a lot of cost. Uh, in many occasions, you will actually uh, get paid a little. Uh, you will get a, sh a small reimbursement. Um, so the general costs for uh, the first year, for instance, are um, uh, delimited to some extra costs uh, for uh, Field School 1. 
uh, where you have to pay a small amount of money for, for, the, for the food that is being distributed during uh, the excavation. Uh, we will have catering at the excavation, for instance, uh, but these are not large amounts of money. Uh, you also need to take into consideration the fact that you have to buy proper field clothing, like uh, proper shoes, uh, rain clothing, uh, but these are expenses that you will have uh, pro that you will profit from from the rest of your career. Yeah, I'd say so. And I would also say that there's not many costs on books. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, yeah, that's that, sort that, of that's an advantage. Yeah, that's yeah. an advantage in, yeah. in that case. You will read a lot of uh, articles yeah. or <laughs> online sources. So you have these two books you will need and you will use, um, but that is not a big cost within your archaeology stu studies at least. So that might be different from other courses where obviously you don't go on field work, but you have to pay a lot of money for big books and stuff. Uh, so I guess maybe that's also something yeah. to take into consideration. Yeah. And, and, and again, uh, you, it's also a bit up to you. So you can um, do expensive field schools uh, in your second year, but you can also choose, to, uh, choose a field school closer to home, for instance. It really depends on yeah, what you can uh, spend on uh, these kind of projects. Yeah. Yes, and also look for scholarships. That's also always oh, an yeah, option. Yeah, there's, there's uh, funding possible as well. Yeah. So uh, I think a final question. Uh, what percentage of students uh, usually passes the first year? Uh, well, uh, from my own experience as being a teacher at, the, uh, at the, the very end of the first year, I would say that about uh, well, at least 80-90% of the students that once started the first year also entered the second year uh, and uh, at, at least come to the excavation uh, at the end of the first year. And uh, I see many of them, I think about 80% at least, return after summer. Yeah, I would say from, from my own year yeah. that's sort of the same. It's usually not of people that drop out because usually it's quite a conscious choice to study archaeology. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there, there can be other reasons why people drop out, but usually it's not uh, that many people, no. Oh, I think we have a nice question to end on then. Yeah. Do you have any personal tips for making a study choice? Well, we have some tips. Do you have some tips as well? <laughs> yeah, I think the most important thing is that you really follow your own interest, um, that you follow your heart when it comes to, uh, to uh, what kind of archaeological uh, uh, projects you, you find the most interesting and, uh, and, and try to look uh, for that first. So what do you find interesting? Uh, and then start looking whether uh, archaeology in Leiden is something that would uh, fit, fit your interests. Yeah, definitely. Talk to, and I would say talk to students, especially talk to students. Yeah, Reach out to students, go see the place as well. That also makes a big difference. And then I think this is where we should leave it for now. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, if your questions didn't get answered or if you still want to speak to some more current students, uh, feel free to join our video call or feel free to chat with our students. We will be here uh, until 4 o'clock um, Dutch time. So thanks again for watching and good luck yeah. with your study choice. Thank you for uh, listening and uh, maybe we will meet you in, uh, in Leiden next year. Bye.